Hi everybody, it's Make It Month 11 and this month we're looking at hollow forms. Hollow form is just a fancy word for um, making a piece of jewellery that looks big and chunky but it's not really heavy because it's hollow inside, it's not solid. Um, quite often you see them used for beads, which is what we're going to start out with, um, ring designs, which is what we're going to work our way up to this month. Um, all sorts of stuff, brooches, shadow boxes, so where it's a hollow form but you can actually see inside it, um, sometimes they build little landscapes up in there, things like that. So it's just a way, like I say, of giving a bit more of a three-dimensional aspect to your work, making larger scale stuff that isn't going to be really, really heavy and cumbersome to wear. Um, so like I said, we're going to start with a bead. I've got a piece of 0.5mm brass here and I'm going to start off by texturing it. But because it's quite hard to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop. I'm going to anneal this with my blowtorch first. The torch is on. I'm just going to go in and heat it all till it's a nice dull pinky colour. It's exactly the same as annealing a piece of copper or a piece of silver. Initially, the metal's going to darken down a little bit and then it will start to have a bit of a pinky glow. It's going to take a little while because it's cold in here and it's a big piece of metal. I'm just going to keep going. And because people keep asking me about my torch, I'm using my Go system. Fine tech flame torch today. plenty hot enough to get this brush up to temperature but like I say because I'm in the shed and it's a bit cold it might take a little minute but it's starting to go so it's getting a pinky hue to it. It also helps having more than one brick so this one stacked at the back is reflecting the heat onto my metal. There we go. Popped it in the water to cool it, popped it in the pickle to clean it and now it's a lot more malleable and ready to roll with the pattern of my choice. So. What I'm going to use is this cupcake wrapper and I'm going to roll it through the rolling mill to impart this texture onto my brush sheet, just on one side. Um, if you want to catch up on how to use a rolling mill, little tips and tricks, you can look back at the previous months, go and check the Kona Craft blog out for that. Um, but for just now, I'm just going to go and roll this and I'll show you how it comes out in a second. There we go. So it's got a pattern on there. I just need to flatten this out with my mallet, give it a little tap. There we go, and I'm ready to put my um, design on there. I've got a shape template to help me decide what shape to make my bead. Decided to go for a little teardrop shape bead, um, but normally when you're making a hollow form, you start out with the edges of your shape. So instead of cutting the front and back of my bead, the teardrop shape, I will cut them as rectangles and I would make an edge in a teardrop shape, which I solder on to one side at the time. Um, to make my edge, I could either cut a strip from my brass, and you could use your saw or your shears to do that, um, but I have some brass bezel wire. So it's nice and straight to begin with, it just saves um, time having to file and sand it. Um, so since I've got it, and it's a bit thick for stone setting, even though it's bezel wire, um, I'm going to use it for the edges in my hollow form. So what I need to do is cut a piece of this and form it roughly into that shape. Now you could get very precise with this and get a little bit of wire or string or something and measure the um, the circumference of the shape but I'm just going to eyeball it. So what I'm going to do is I've got my ring mandrel, I've got my wire and I'm just going to bend it around the ring mandrel just by hand into <laughs> a rough teardrop shape and then I can play around with the sizing of this. So at the minute, it's a little bit long and tall, so I'm just going to pull it down a little bit. I could have also annealed this, it would make it a lot easier. But there you go, once that tightens up, that's going to be about the right size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this, I'm just going to use my shears but again, you could use your saw, and then flatten it out, just give it bent at all with some flat pliers. You can check your ends if they need filing, give them a good file. Otherwise, if you think they're going to match up all right, I'm just going to take some pliers and I'm just going to bend one end of my wire so it's touching the edge of the other side. 
I'm not really caring about my shape at this point because once it's soldered together and it's a solid thing it's going to be a lot easier to true the shape up. I'm just concentrating on getting a nice tight join and if it's a bit springy you can push it past itself, give it a little squish similar to when we made the ring bands so you work hard in this area and then pull it back into position and you want to keep going with that until you can't see any daylight coming through your join and it's at that point that's going to be nice and ready to um, solder. We'll keep playing with this and show you how to get on in a minute. There we go. So I'm just going to go and solder that join now um, and clean it up. Okay, I've got my shape in my tweezers, I've fluxed my join and I've got my solder nestled in the nook of that join and now I just need to heat it. I'm going to heat gently around it initially, not directly touching my metal because I don't want my flux to bubble and knock my solder out of position. And then in a minute when the solder, when the flux, sorry, will settle down then I can go in and be a bit more direct with the heat. So that's now. So now I'm concentrating on getting both sides of my join up to temperature. But I'm also heating underneath where the um, two sides meet to draw the solder through. Just spin it round a bit so you can see a bit more. Okay. Heating both sides of my join, getting both sides nice and equally hot, but also heating underneath where I want the solder to pull through to. The solder runs towards the heat, and I want that solder to run where I want it to go and get a nice neat join. But thinking about it, any second, and there it goes. So I'm heating underneath, pulling it through that join, all the way to the front, and that's it done. I'm going to turn my torch off, leave this for a little second to cool, and then I'm going to put it in the water, I'm going to put it in the pickle till it's clean. I managed to do the next bit without pressing record. <laughs> So what I did was I took out the pickle, it was nice and clean, popped it on a ring mandrel, trued up the shape, just pretend, go through the motions until it's a nice teardrop shape. Um, this one shaped up really nicely on its own but again if you need to you could go in with some flat pliers or similar just to um, straighten up any other edges that need work but now all this needs is a really good file on that join to um, just make it a lot neater so I'm off to do that I'm going to support it on my bench peg and remember when you're filing you're pushing and lifting you're not scrubbing your file back and forth um, but it's going to be so much easier if I support it down here on my peg and so get this done and then I'll show you how it comes out in a second Remember, if you support your shape on something, so whether it's your peg or at the very least sort of put your elbows on the table if you're just sat on a normal table, it's going to be so much quicker to file and you're going to have so much more control than trying to do it in the air. Because if you try and do it in the air, although you are filing, every time you do this and push with this hand, this hand is giving, so it takes a lot longer. You don't have anywhere near as much control if you can just brace on something every time you push you've got resistance so it's quicker it's more in control your metal's not wiggling around all over the place it's coming up nice already a little bit more on this and then I'll be ready to sort it into my background So like we said before, I'm not cutting my background out as a teardrop shape, I'm going to cut it out as a rectangle or two rectangles, so one for the back, one for the front. I'm just going to use my shears, I'm just going to really quickly chop two rectangles. And you can see because I'm using my shears it does curl a little bit but it will flatten out in two seconds if I give it a smack with my mallet. So it tends to be, for me anyway, quicker than um, using my saw. 
and now just get rid of the curly bits on the steel block and tap it flat. So same as when we did bezel setting, um, when I solder my edge onto my background, I need to make sure there's no gappy bits of daylight, which at the minute, as you can see, there are. So it's not too far off, but I just need to do a little bit of sanding to make sure that this side wall sits completely flush onto my base. Um, and to do that, I'm just gonna sit and sand on here um a figure of eight motion is the best normally um, but some people struggle with that so you can just go round and round or back and front but you just need to be aware that if you don't do figure of eight um quite often you're leaning slightly more on one part of the um the piece that you're sanding than the other so it might come out a bit irregular um so i'm going to put the camera down so i can do my figure of eight just you need the sound effects the other thing as well, if you're making a hollow form, at some point you need to allow for the air that's going to be trapped inside when we put a lid on that. Because if you go to solder this, um, or heat it up in general, if you don't have anywhere for that air to escape, potentially it's going to explode, which obviously we do not want. Because what happens is if you go near something, there's air, you heat it up, the air expands with the heat, if that air cannot escape, then pressure builds and then eventually something might pop. So because it's going to be a bead, I've popped a little hole in there. I'm gonna show you how to do it on the side. You could drill this obviously, but I have some hole punch pliers. So I'm gonna line it up with my pliers, squeeze, pop, there we go. And then I give it a little wiggle and it will come off, come on. There we go, little hole either side so now because i've sanded it as well that is ready to solder it's sitting nice and tight on the base but also it has an air escape hole which will um, also become the point where the chain goes through for my little bead okay so same as bezel setting i have my two pieces sat on the brick i flux them i've got my solder dotted around the inside edge torch is on i'm going to heat it at a bit of a distance so that the um the flux can evaporate nice and slowly and controlled rather than bubbling and knocking on the solder in that position. I don't clamp things to my base, so sometimes you'll see people doing these sort of joins um, and they use binding wire or titanium soldering clamps or various other things to put pressure on the, um, the bezel wire or the outside edge so it sits as tight as possible for the base but I just like to get as good a join as possible through sanding. Now because it's like I say it's cold in here it's a bigger piece brass is a poor conductor of heat compared to silver so this is going to take longer than it would if it was a piece of silver or copper for that matter but it will go. It's already thinking about it. starting to melt and just pour it round to the outside of my bezel I'm heating in the middle to get some heat through the metal but also around the outside edge to draw the molten solder through so I know it's come through the whole job. One side soldered to one front of the base. Oh, my face. <laughs> So now what I need to do is cut off my excess. So again, very similar to bezel setting. And again, you can use your saw, you can use your shears, whatever you would rather. I am going for my shears for quickness. I'm cutting as close as I can so that I have less filing to do in a minute. There we go, so now I just need to file these until they're nice and flush. So to do my filing, it's the same as before, get as much support as I can, push and lift, push and lift. If you have a rotary tool like a Dremel, you could use that at this point. 
but I normally like to um, use a hand file. And I just want to keep going until it looks like one solid piece, which is also why I didn't bother letting it um, clean properly in the pickle because the filing is going to uh, take away any of the sides. It's just going to get dirty again on the next solid job. We'll put that there. There we go, all ready to um, solder onto the other side. Now as you can see it's not clean, so in theory that wouldn't be ready for soldering, but the actual edge that I'm soldering, can you see how clean that is from the filing? So that's fine to go. So I'm going to take it over here. Now the only problem is now, how do I put the solder in place? Because it's solid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sweat solder onto my outer edge and then when the solder's run I can pick it up, put it in place, heat the two together until it um, joins nicely. Okay, all prepped, but I'm actually going to heat my base first, partly because it's the, it's a big area so it needs to get heat through it and partly so that the air warms so that again I don't knock those teeny tiny bits of solder out of position. That's when I can start getting a little bit more aggressive with it. Ooh. And just roll away. Okay. I'm going to keep these until it's all around. Now I've flipped it over and I'm going to heat it up again. So again, concentrating on my base and my sides. I don't need to heat the top of my piece. I just need to heat the elements that I'm trying to join together, which is the base piece and my side edge. I'm going to keep doing that until I see the solder start to flow through to the front of my um, piece. If you want to keep going until you can see your shimmery line all the way around that join and then you know it's dragged the solder all the way through if you've got any patches you can either keep heating them or you could add a little bit more solder on that side of that join so you just want to see that shimmery line all the way around that edge and i'm happy with that so i'm going to cool it off now and i'm going to put it in the pickle screen it's red hot so I'm just giving it a little second and then I'll put it in the water. I just need to let it cool a little bit because it's red hot and it now has a hole in it. If I put it in the water there's always a chance it's going to um, spurt some steam out which I don't want. So like I said I'm just going to give it a few seconds, let it go completely grey so I know it's cooled down a little bit and then I can quench it and clean it. There we go, just for speed's sake, so I've got to go out to um, work soon. I've decided not to pickle it because, again, I'm about to cut most of this off um, and then the file is going to clean it up. If I was to pickle it, one of the things I need to be careful about is um, if there's pickle left inside that hole, trapped inside the little um, hole of the piece because that would eventually eat away at the metal if you don't flush it out properly. So once you've pickled something that's hollow, that has holes in it, you need to make sure you give it a really good flush with some water and then ideally um, mix a little bit of bicarb soda or um, something similar and soak it in that as well just to neutralise the, um, the acid of the pickle. But we'll talk a bit more about that another day. In the meantime, I am chopping. Ooh. Okay, so super quick because I've got to go off to work now, but there is one really simple hollow form bead with a nice little necklace. So all I've done is I gave it a quick file and a quick polish, but I say because I'm being super quick it still needs a lot of clean up it's still covered in scratches from filing but I hope you can see 
Um, people ask me all the time about what solder I use, so I use silver solder for all of this. I use hard silver solder for every single join on this piece of brass. But if you do your cleanup, if you file and sand and have a nice tight join so the solder just goes where you want it to go in the first place, there's no reason why you should be able to see the, um, the solder joins, the silver solder, by the time you finish with it. And like I say, I've hardly done any cleanup to this at all, but it's already looking pretty good. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that one. As you can see, as always when I'm filming here, it's absolutely pouring down now and I have to go to work. <laughs> so anyway, um, I hope you found that useful. I'm going to be doing more um, this week. We'll do some more complicated things and I've got some little um, solderable elements, some hollow form elements to show you as well. Um, which you can add to your designs just to give them that little punch of 3D. So I hope you look forward to that. I hope you have a go. Let me know how you get on. And I will get this cleaned up at some point and show you the finished piece. <laughs> Bye for now.